I found chrono tends to be a good word to use in your game title. It's like chrono trigger. Uh, well, all right, sorry. Well, there's two chrono con. It's also really good. Well, you want some bullet points? Why I think it's a lot of fun. Well, no problem. I've got them for you. 2D sprite based graphics, incredible itemization, maybe the best I've ever seen and a good version of Diablo three. Now you might stop short in your tracks and think, wait a fuck. I don't like Diablo three. That's a horrible selling point. And I'd say, hang tight, hold on, calm down. Let me explain. And you'd say, no, I don't care. I won't give you a chance to explain you pest. I'd say, hey, sit down, get some breakfast, maybe some lunch, perhaps some dinner. And let's talk about why Diablo three two might be the best ARPG ever made. I am being partially disingenuous, fancy that, because Chronicon does do a lot of distinct things, but it sincerely has a D3 feel, and it's something you instantly compare it to once you reach the end game. But that's what I want to get across. I really enjoy Chronicon. For me, the experience truly began as a dislike. Honestly, I sat down, opened it up, and just didn't feel it. Combat felt slow. It lacked the impact I wanted. The skill trees, I mean, look at these skill trees. These menus are chunkier than most peanut butters. I mean, it's loaded with buttons and skills and things to improve, but steadily, increasingly, it became addicting. You wondered if A synergized with B, if this item fundamentally changed this skill to go from complete trash to absolutely build defining. And guess what? Most things work exactly how you want them to. Complexity is a double-edged sword, but you can blunt the edge that's hitting you in your fucking face, and it's by being completely transparent. In my opinion, don't hide little facts about interactions. Completely explain if an ability procs another one, or if this interaction works on passive skills or only on active abilities, you know, that kind of thing. Explain as much as you can, and Chronicon does this perfectly. Only a handful of interactions didn't function exactly as I wanted, but let's chalk that up to my less than adequate mental power. So far, I've only expressed that the game feels good and that's very much like Diablo 3, so that's a complete oxymoron, but I think if we travel through my playthroughs and thought processes together, things will begin to make better sense. By the way, we're flying through a lot of things today, so buckle up fuckle, it's going to be a bumpy ride. On launch, you're presented with four character classes. You've got the Berserker, the Warlock, the Templar, and the Warden. Why are these all weird as fuck? We got some anti-mainstream naming going on here. That was weird. Just had a little deja vu. But anyway, these four are pretty much what you'd expect. This guy, well, he hits the ground, obviously. The Elf Girl, well, I wonder what shit she does. And the Warlock is the token magic man, and then the Templar, probably the most unique class archetype in the game. There's also the Dickel class of the Mechanist, who wasn't out while I was playing, and I'm not even sure if it's out now. I'm not checking. Mechanist? more like me cannot be bothered. There we go. Me clever, me write script. Deposit the cash into the chute. Since I am Seer, chief of the apes, I went with Berserker, named him Ballasack, and got into the world, and you're quite interestingly greeted by a hub instead of the usual ragged town full of fuckers like Geed. So you speak with ye old bald man, and he explains that you're going to go through different time periods in history and crush ass, and you say, okay. So you have five acts in different time periods and settings to blast through, and the game really benefits from having this kind of episodic approach. Really, there's not too much of a story. Hell, you're not even much of a hero. You're just some guy stealing other people's valor. But hey, at least you can prove strong enough to fight the forces of hell. Literally, why does every game in this genre love the concept of hell? I guess it's just ripe spot for beating ass. So that's the context. Here's your free skill point. Best of luck. All right, so welcome to the metaphorical zoo because we're about to look at a lot of shit. The player makes a choice between one of four skill trees, which is relatively overwhelming. Basically, every skill is a make your own adventure book. You have slots that have a few choices and each dependent choice adjusts to whatever you selected. So if you want the area of effect option or owie, you can take that or perhaps you want a little single target attack. Well, that's something you can dynamically decide. As you progress, you find all sorts of passives that relate to one another, abilities that gain power if you have skills found in other trees, giving you a simple pathway to take if you're not sure where to go. Like who doesn't want their flame dragon to piss out chain lightning that now procs earthquakes which carry sticks that beat the enemy's knees which cause explosions and when you cause an enemy to explode you gain 4000 life and mana and walking now casts flame drag. Basically, it goes nuts, and it's not a slow process. You're going to start seeing bombs, bombs, the instant you start leveling up a bunch, and then when the synergies hit, it gets even more insane. For example, my warden build, oh yeah, I shelved ball of Zack, first character turned into asshole, and I'll explain why in a second, but this warden build got this like contra spread fire shot, which casted an exploding bleed blast on kill, and then I had a tornado going around, seriously, with 10 E's for extreme, excessive, effectual, effervescent, effortless, elaborate, electrifying, empowering, enchanting, and enjoyable, there goes the word budget, the action in Chronicon is pretty much unparalleled in how wild it can get. 
But in reference to why Bala's act didn't work out, I was simply mana starved. I mean, tornadoes coming out on cooldown is fairly unstoppable, crazily calamitous with a K, extreme and destructive, or simply fucked, but you need to have a good mana economy to make that happen. Well, barring all the better ideas you'll have soon to make your dreams come true later, early on, your first skill in each tree is an auto attack replacer, and each usage of the skill grants you 4% of your mana back. God's sake, I have less yearly interest with my savings account. 4% on mana back per usage, I mean, that's a glut, that's amazing. So since it really is complicated, you might spend an overabundance of time reading these trees to get an idea of where you want to work towards, but the good news is that a rough skim for the immediate leveling future is perfectly valid, because you are granted infinite free respects. Like, god, this guy's working overtime. As something I'll only briefly mention, there's an additional level up in skill mechanic known as mastery. Now, this is what the menu looks like. Cower in fear, I know. Surprisingly not terribly confusing, this is the first of several Diablo 3 references, it can basically be compared to Paragon points, that is, infinitely gainable levels that you can use to invest in basic traits for your skills and stats. This is enormously customizable, if you like to hit buttons for the sake of it, believe me, plenty of opportunity to do so here. But I'll leave this for you to figure out, it's just too much for one man such as myself to explain in great depth. Also, nicely, you can just respect the entire mastery bar the same way as your skills, and you can even just remove a few points at a time instead of the whole table, so basically this game is a playground. You go from location to location, fighting different enemies, trying out all sorts of skills, and here's a segue, finding very interesting gear. The loot in Chronicon is top tier. I'll try to hit on all the major details, but this could go on forever. Firstly, forget what you think about drops being rare, because that's not an issue with gearing up here. I'm sure some things are pretty hard to find, especially with modifiers you desperately want, but for the most part, there's a million items dropping everywhere. The game is pretty straight up with how many things even exist, because there's a collection log straight out of Kirby's Great Cave Offensive, detailing where you got something, what it does, its favorite food, I mean, it's all in here. And for collection junkies, all RuneScape dumpos out there, this game can scratch that itch. And with only a few playthroughs, you'll probably find most of the items in this table and a ton of duplicates along the way. Not only this, but with unique enemies to find, locations you have and have not been to, how many enemies you've killed, there's a lot of fun to be had looking in menus. But back to drops, specifically, you have the common rarity, which practically doesn't matter, then you've got the better blue, which barely matters, leading into purple, which is useful for about 50 seconds, and then pink unique items, and then there's legendary red items, and then there's the omega orange true legendary items. I mean, what the fuck, man? But what makes things most interesting is that that gear can drop and be usable at any level, with true legendary gear being the exception, requiring level 100 to use and find. But this is where complication happens, so pay attention, put your useless fucking ass dog shit math homework away and think about this. Five difficulties, each one increasing experience, magic find, enemy health and damage, etc. You can only begin finding legendaries on the top three difficulties, meaning you're incentivized to make the game harder and harder as you play. You can change difficulty at any time, and it's encouraged to start pretty low and go all the way up slowly. Now, as referenced before, you can get your legendary set items at, like, level 35 or something. Since max level is 100, the stats are going to make that item total trash by the end game. but the developers took note of this and have a cube, basically just a Haradric cube, where you can transmute items with various recipes, including one which can consume a higher level unique of the same type, making your lower level item end game viable without having to find it again. Now, this is all great, it means your build gets off the ground early, you find what you want to use for the duration of the game at variable points in time, and with full flexibility, how can things get much better. Well, say you're like me and you get your perceived best in slot gear very early into your end game playthrough. Well, fortunately, there's a way to rip special components off of other uniques and paste them onto what you're using. So you find the demon dick destroyer and you have the amazing ass attacker. These are not real items. And then you can break one of them down into a rune and then put it on the other one. And there you go. You have fused the two item effects. So now your gear has become unbelievably strong. And this just seems like a good time to explain how the end game works. Now that we're in this part of the discussion, I'm going to make a lot of Diablo 3 references. Not Diablo 2, don't worry, surprisingly, Diablo 2 isn't what I'm talking about today. No, sir. None of that Diablo 2 talk. What the fuck does this bar do? If you're not privy, Diablo 3 Endgame involves a lot of farming the same shit called rifts and greater rifts and this and that. You push the difficulty up and up forever and just try to farm efficiently. As you farm, you no longer gain levels but endlessly gainable paragon points which give you general character strengths. Along with this, better versions of gear you've already found will start dropping, giving you even more power. So essentially, the Diablo 3 Endgame is running a ton of repeating random dungeon screens and finding a boss at the end. Chronicon has the exact identical gameplay loop, however, it does 
does have a cap and this cap is fucking almighty. I mean, look at this percentage increase. I've seen bank accounts with less than 200 million percent interest. That's Titanic. So speaking of Titanic, you're going to bring a boat ton of firepower down on your foes and you can start hitting hard, like billions of damage hard. But the beauty is that it's not handed to you. There's a lot of dynamic choices you have to make to get there. And since resistances are immensely important, you can't just go straight for power. It has to be a balance. And comparably to Diablo 3, there's so much going on here that makes the experience tailor makeable and enjoyable. That's several ables. You can't deny that's able to make one have a good time, asshole. Enchanting, socketing, runes, companions, scrolls, potions, buffs, it's fucked. But it's all additive. I don't feel like any of this was implied to be completely necessary. You will do better with more, of course, but you can get by with less. Although you might wonder what you're hitting with the wrath of God. Well, it's a lot of variation. It's full of skeletons, quadrupedal things like rams, boars, maybe those are the only ones. Ghosts, skeletons, just regular old fucking skeletons, dead students, trees, elves. You know, it's just a mishmash. There's a lot of little irritation factors with this game, and surprisingly it stems from picking things up. Firstly, locating the exact place the game wants you to stand to pick up an item drop is obnoxious. Usually, it's just confusing to see your way. This is not such a problem, except that the go-go-go nature of the game means that you're juxtaposing fast-paced gameplay with slogging around clicking on little buttons that are oddly positioned. Not to mention you gain bonuses based on keeping streaks of kills going, akin to, again, Diablo 3. This means that you don't want to stop, but this weird detection forces you to. Fortunately, there is a loot filter in game, and it's pretty good, but that's only part of it. The other part is endgame crafting materials, which are way more important to pick up en masse and are just as finicky. You might think that the auto pickup button will be your salvation, but on second evaluation, you'll notice it picks up every item near your radius. So if you want a clogged toilet for an inventory, then be my guest, but this constantly annoyed me. Also, this is a personal problem, but the game is way more fun before you're an unkillable one-shotting god. I mean, that's what is the most fun, becoming insanely strong and unstoppable, but after a while, you're going to be very over the power fantasy. When you're tasked with collecting millions upon millions of crystal currency for stash tabs, enchanting bills, and all other manner of shit, you have to buy, you'll long for a time when you just stopped and had to read new uniques. All the times I felt this way around, you know, five-ish hours into being overpowered, I just started a new class playthrough. And the fun was reignited, but that means there's only so much to experience here. Until, of course, the Ancient Beast expansion. Now that's a fucking table, my goodness. And yeah, it bored me again super quick. Now, the way this works is you have more crafting materials for beast companions, meaning yes, more skimming around, clogging yourself. And the table, serving like a Path of Exile-esque mapping system, well, it has a bunch of character bonuses, which would give extraordinarily more strength, but they cost many millions of currency, so back to farming, clearing screens, walking around, it gets old. But that's not to say this game isn't fun, and that the devastating amount of playability should be considered a negative to the game design. If anything, it's good you can try out your favorite build for probably months of your real life. Side note, I don't like the Berserker's face. I thought, you, I thought you'd like to know. I don't know why this bugs me. It just, it just does. <laughs> but Chronicon is quality. I really dug it. It's got a fun art design besides this fucking face. It has really cool ambience and music and gameplay. And you know what? Forget it. It's got to be in the running for the best ARPG ever made. I mean, it's the only 2D one that I've played, and it's a lot of fun. I'll be playing a hardcore run and we'll be back at some point with my thoughts on that. Actually, when will that be? I could have sworn I had a plan about when I wanted to do that, but it's escaping me. Feels like a lot of little details have been escaping me lately, but that's not a problem. I think. I'll just chalk it up to my apehood. But no matter what, Chronicon is part of the running, and we'll be back to chat about how it stacks up against everything else later. For next week, I think it's time for a little Minecraft done. No, it's not. Fuck that. Van Helsing next.